Okay, uh, this is Dr. Morton, and I'm uh, recording the uh, the lecture for uh, the 27th of October. So uh, we're cruising along. We're in the 10th week of the semester. There are only 14 weeks in this semester, not counting the the, la the final exam time. And uh, so we're rapidly uh, moving towards the end of this uh, uh, the the end of this semester. So we do have. A couple of things left on the horizon here. One of those things is that uh, that we want to do. Um, uh, we want to get started on the final projects. We have uh, another lab to do this week, and I think this week we'll do the sleep lab. I'll talk about that on Thursday, I guess. Uh, but the main thing is, uh, so do uh, midnight uh, on the twenty seventh. Uh, all are the project proposals. Everybody must have a project proposal in. Now, if uh, you for a group, you only have to have one submission. Okay, so I don't need all three people to submit the same project submission. If you have a group of three, if you have a group of three, pick one person, they submit it. Everybody's covered. Just make sure you list all the names on the proposal. But there's a space for that, so that shouldn't be a trouble. And hopefully this week, then I'll get all the project proposals in and uh, reviewed. And uh, I'll get everybody kind of set up so we know uh, who's on what team. If you want to do it all by yourself, that's fine. You can have a group of one, two, or three. That's as big as it gets unless I give you special permission. And once you've submitted the proposal, or well, if you've already submitted it, that's fine. You can change it now. You've got till midnight on the 27th to firm up your proposal uh, as far as who's going to be on your team. You can t kick people off your team after that, but you can't add anybody. You can change your proposal, however. You can modify what you're doing. You can add modules. You can take away modules. That's all fine, and uh, that's all negotiable and fine. But adding people is not. you got to get that set by tomorrow night. Uh, or by, sorry, by the 20, midnight to 27th. It actually is Monday. I'm recording it on Monday. But anyway, okay, so let's look at the syllabus so we can see kind of where we are. And... Um, I'm going to move me over here. Let's see. Oh, put me over here. Okay. So, uh, here's the syllabus. And if you notice, we're down here on the 27th of October. Wherever that... Oh, crap. I, I screwed that up. Okay, let's, let's fix that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, final project proposal due. The lecture for today, I'm going to... I'm going to demonstrate the LCD display today. Uh, I demonstrated it on Thursday last week, but today I'm going to show you uh, how the commands actually work so you kind of have some understanding of how it actually works. Um, the, the nice part about the I2C interface is you have two header files that are taking care of a lot of the problems for you. You have the, uh, the I2C header file, which you don't even have to deal with, and you have the LCD underscore I2C header file that then you issue commands to, and, and they get translated through I2C to write, the, to write a byte into this, uh, to this uh, uh, PCF chip that's, that's driving the display. But it is a 4-bit interface, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate all that stuff so you understand. Um, okay, so we'll go through that, because I do want you to have some understanding of how this works. Uh, not so much because it's the end-all, be-all, although these are still very useful devices. They're still used in in current products. If you need a simple interface, this this could be a very good way to do it. Uh, and they're very cheap, and, and so it's a right, really nice solution if if you need a relatively inexpensive interface for your embedded design, where you want to display some information, but you don't want to spend a bunch of money on it and have you know fancy graphics and touch screens and all that. You just want a little display. Fine. It's a good solution for that. It still is. Uh, there are other options out there. But most of them start costing a little more money, and they're a little more complicated to deal with. So, and uh, I might demonstrate some of that. Like one of the things you can use, you can use an OLED display. It's a graphical display. It's kind of cool. They're they're pretty cute, um, and some of them will even give you one line that's in a in a different color. It's a it's really a it's it's a monochrome display, but they give you one line that can be a different color, so it makes it a little more a little more nice. And then and then there's full blown um, you know, uh, full-blown, basically, uh, uh, screens, like for your laptop, that you can use 
Um, they come in all sorts of different sizes now, and you can get them fairly small sizes. And you can have all sorts of graphical displays and multiple colors and even a touch interface if you want. But those are complicated, and they add, they add, they add quite a bit of cost to the project because they're not cheap. Uh, these suckers, you uh, in quantity, you could, you probably aren't even paying two dollars for them. Um, all right. Well, in fact, if you just have, depending on how you drive it, but it, anyway, you you can get these uh, very inexpensively compared to say, um, you know, a real, uh, you know, LCD type, uh, you know, uh, full color display like for a laptop or something. Okay, so that's what we'll do now. Um, the lab for this week, uh, I think I have baseline lab nine, the two transistor switch and all that. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do instead is I'm going to have you do the sleep lab. And I may just skip lab nine because to really do it, you need to come in and get the transistors. And uh, if you don't have the transistors, and it's going to be a problem. So we're just going to delete that lab. And I'll, I'll change this. Uh, I'll change the uh, syllabus around to show that. So we're going to do lab eight and not lab nine this week. Okay. Uh, and I'll talk about that on Thursday as well. Okay, I think that's... Uh, so what else is coming up? Let's see. I think that's it. So the only thing that's left, final... So one more lab, uh, the sleep lab. I don't think we'll ever do lab nine. And we're not going to do the KL25Z lab. And the reason for that is uh, they cost 15 bucks. So you would have to buy one. Uh, and then after you bought it, uh, then you could uh, then you could do the lab. Now, if you want to buy one and do the lab, the lab's posted. It's on the blackboard. You can do it. That's fine. And we'll and if you want to come in and get help with it, we'll do that too. Um, it takes a different integrated development environment, so you have to download a new IDE and get it all done, and it's complicated. And then on top of that, um, we do have it in the lab. So if you want to come in the lab and do it in the lab, you can do that. The software is already installed. Um, and those are useful labs, and it's useful to see this. Uh, this 32-bit processor that even though it's kind of the bottom of the KL line, it's still uh, very powerful and much more powerful than, the, than, than, our, than our, our mid-level, low-level 8-bit PIC. I mean, this is, after all, an 8-bit processor versus a 32-bit processor. So it is, it is not as powerful. This, but the KL25Z can do it. It is very powerful compared to the PIC, and it can do a lot of things. So if you want to play with that lab, you're more than welcome. Uh, but I'm, but I'm not going to require it. And I'm also, uh, I don't know how many we have. We do have some of these in the parts bin. I usually buy them for, you know, $16 a piece or whatever the price is now, plus shipping. And then I sell them for, you know, 15 or whatever. So I take a little loss on them. But um, anyway, and I usually don't get reimbursed on top of that. <laughs> so, so it sort of works out that it's expensive. These suckers, you know, when I buy a hundred of these at fifth at seventeen dollars a piece or whatever it is, it's a lot of money. It's about one thousand seven hundred bucks or whatever. So, um, so that's another reason to maybe back off this semester because I, I I just don't see that many people coming into the parts bin and buying them. So, okay, um, all right. So no lab eleven. No lab nine. All we're going to do is lab eight. We just did lab 10. And then we'll be done with the labs. All you have to do is final exam and your project. That's it. And uh, the project can be done. Uh, I'll probably let you turn it in. I don't know. I, I haven't scheduled a final turn in date, but maybe all the way up to say maybe even the, the first of uh, December and um, something like that. And we might even move the final exam up a little bit. Uh, I'll make it available to be done. And maybe you can, you can have two or three days and you can do it any time in that two or three day period. Okay. Um, all right. I think that's good. We'll get rid of this. And then, uh, yeah, don't save. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up the, so you can see what's going on here. So let me do that. Okay, we'll bring this up. And we'll put this over here. Yeah, and it will do, do me here. Okay, so this is, this, is a, this is a nifty little board called the Electronic Explorer. Maybe I'll make it like this. 
and we'll make it bigger maybe yeah and then we'll put this there all right so this is a thing digilent makes and it's kind of cool and um and maybe we'll slide this down like this yeah that's good okay perfect and we have here the uh the two line by 16 lcd display now this one does not have the i2c interface it's just it's just a 16 by 2 lcd display and you can see i have a bunch of wires running to it i have it set up so that i can control all the data lines and and all the control lines and the way i have that set up is with the software that comes with this and so um let me make sure i can actually get that up so let me take a second and do that. Okay, so here's the setup. So, so here's the display on the board. And then here, here are all the controls. Now we have on the bottom here, here I think I'm going to see if I can move this a little bit. Yeah, I want to put this up here. And then I'll raise this up just a little bit. And maybe I'll shrink this down just a hair. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Okay, so so now, and it looks like you'll be able to see this, hopefully. All right, so on this, we have all eight data lines controlled down here. And we can, we can set the data lines uh, to be... Um, yeah, I think the data lines are here, okay? And we can switch them zero to one or we can even disconnect them if we want okay so uh, and then we have our three control lines here our register select line our write and read line and our e line now on the e line we have a push button right here and the reason we have a push button is because that line has to get toggled to lock it's basically works like a clock and then all the rest of these dots don't do anything. And the row down here doesn't do anything. Just this, these three lines here and these here. And I don't know. You probably can make some of these go away, but I, I don't know how to do that. All right. Now, what I want you to see then is we're going we're gonna to use the data lines and we're going we're gonna to step through this. Okay. So uh, the other thing that I guess I could show. So here's... Yeah, so here's here I'm going to use this little block diagram, and I get that from the Julian Islet article. Maybe I maybe I'll try and yeah maybe I'll now this this down here this is this is also a little bit this is a part of the Electronic Explorer, and uh, and for some reason it won't let me just put it up here. I just don't okay. And this is just we have different power supplies up here, and we have one very adjustable power supply that's controlling the contrast. And then we have another one that's powering the, uh, the, the LCD display. And then we have all the wires connected to the control lines through these switches down here. These toggle switches, and then these, these two toggles and this push button. So we, we have control over all these lines. And we don't really need to see this display, but I might modified a little bit to just fine-tune the, the, the appearance here. All right, now let me pull up the data sheet real quick. I'll stop this so I can do this. Okay, so let me show you where the Julian Islet articles are. If you go all the way down here to uh, right here, LCD instructions, LCD files. You go to the instructions, there's two uh, parts here, part one and part two. These are the Julian Islet articles. You should read those. They're very helpful. Um, wouldn't take you long to read through them, and then you would know probably everything you ever wanted to know. Okay, so I'm going to scroll through this. I'm going to get to, so here's the pinouts, and here's a little test jig that Julian Islet recommended you build to play with this. But I have the same thing set up, but using the Electronic Explorer, basically. All right, and here's, here's the little guidance there. Now, uh, I'm going to see if I can let you see this thing and I'm going to try and shrink this down so it sort of works this is going to be hard 
Okay, something like that. Okay, and then I'm going to totally get rid of this. And then I'm going to put this underneath here, like that. Maybe I'll even make it a little bigger. And then we're going to have this over here, and I'm going to be up here. And now you can still see this somewhat, I think. Good, perfect. Okay, so now this is all the commands that there are. And uh, they the commands are listed over here. Clear display, display and, and cursor home, character entry mode, display on off cursor, display cursor shift left, function select, uh, set the character generator RAM address, set display address okay so those are your those are your controls and then these little things down here tell you about you know increment decrement display shift on display shift off display on display off cursor underline cursor underline off cursor blink cursor blink off the and so forth and uh eight, five by ten mode five by seven dot format one or two line mode zero to one line mode one uh uh, eight bit interface, four bit interface, right shift, left shift. Okay, so these are the various commands you can give it, and and uh, you can even do more than this. But this is this really does contain them all. It just doesn't explain them in complete detail. And then we'll do this. Okay, now what I'm gonna what I'm gonna show here, or what I'm gonna do, try and do. Okay, so the first thing is we have to turn the display on. Now, if you read through this whole article. Uh, the second part especially, and you go to the end, you'll see that he, he, he recommend, that the recommended power-up instructions to go to the display is to issue is to issue uh, the, the command uh, hex, hex 30 hex 30 three times, okay? So now I have all, all eight bits of the data uh, lines are connected. Okay, and and three there are three control lines. So I need to put in hex thirty. Well, so hex thirty would be the upper four. That's three and zero. That's hex thirty, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna put it in register. I'm gonna put it in command mode, and I'm gonna issue it one, two, three times. Okay, by punching that uh, that E button, which is essentially the clock. Okay, now we've done that. Now now we're gonna we're gonna be in eight bit mode, so we're gonna put in uh, we're gonna put in twenty, okay, and we'll hit that. That puts it in eight bit mode. It it really is in eight bit mode by default. Um, but we're gonna now we're gonna turn the display on, okay, and to turn it on we do zero F. So zero, one, one, one. One. Okay, this actually turns it on. It's not on yet, even though you can send commands to it. It's powered. It's just it's just the display part's not on. Okay, now it's on, and now we're gonna we're gonna send in. Um, we're gonna do. We're gonna turn the the. Uh, we're gonna turn on the cursor. Let's see. Um, yeah, and that should have been. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so what we have to do for that is uh, so we need display cursor okay display on off cursor so we so the upper four bits are zeros and then we put in one uh, and then the D is display it's on so one one and then the underline is one and the B is blank is one so that should have that should have done the, that should have done it but but we're not seeing it, so there it may be because we have the uh, the contrast set wrong. So let let's see. So here's our positive supply, our fixed supply, uh, our reference voltage. It's on, and I don't know why it's not uh, it's not working. So yeah, so all these are on. All right, let me. Um, I'm going to stop and get it going here. Okay, I think I've got it set up now. I had to change the uh, the uh, this reference voltage, which drives the uh, the V, uh, which drives the uh, the V zero, the contrast uh, input. All right, so now we're going to do now we're going to do thirty three times to get, make sure it's all good. So 
one, two. We have it set for command. We have it set for write. So one, two, three. So we issue that three times. Now we're going to do zero F and we're going to turn on the uh, we're going to turn on the display and set the cursor as blinking underline zero F. Okay. Now we go. Now the display is on and it's blinking. Now this just illustrates if you don't have that contrast pin set correctly, you're just not going to see anything. So there on your LCD uh, display with the I2C daughter board in the back, there's a little pot that you have to adjust. And I tried to show you that in the video last week. So make sure you keep that in mind and you do adjust that little pot. Okay, so now here we are. Now, one of the things we want to do, we just have the top line being displayed. So we want to put it into two-line mode. Well, two-line mode, if you look down here, uh, two-line mode is the two-one. So that's right here. So we want to do this function set, zero, zero, one, and then this here puts us in uh, one puts it in a four a eight bit mode. But if we put a zero in there, we'd switch to four bit mode. Right now we're in eight bit mode. We don't want to do that. So we'll put zero zero one one, and then we do want to be in two line mode. So we'll put one. So that's going to be so hex three, and then a one, and then the next one is uh, whether you're doing the five by ten or the five by seven. We want five by seven. We'll put a zero. And then these are don't care. So zero zero. So we're gonna put in, we're gonna put in three C. Three C. Sorry, uh, let's see, make sure I get that right. Yeah, one. No, sorry, three eight. Thirty-eight. All right, we're gonna do thirty-eight. So we're gonna put in thirty-eight. So three. And then we're gonna put in eight. So we just leave the we leave bit three up. All right. So now, now watch what happens when I hit this. We're going to get the second line down here, but the cursor will still be up here blinking. And actually, because that voltage now is off a little bit, when we switch to four line mode, we actually have to change this a little bit. So let me go here, and we'll we'll switch this down. Yeah, and now we go back to the voltage we originally had set. Okay, 600, which works great. All right, so now you can see both lines are are active. Um, and you can adjust that contrast so you don't see these squares. But uh, for this purpose, it's actually helpful to see them. Uh, if I fiddle with it, if I'll put this still here. Now I see them really dramatically. And if I go the other way, I can I can almost make them disappear. Yeah, so whatever. I'm going to go about here. It's a little nicer. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, now, now I'm going to, now what do I want to do? Well, now I can put in some data, okay? Now, or I can pick a position. Let's, let's, uh, let's do, let's put in data. So to put in data, now I have to go to the ASCII chart, and I can put in ASCII characters. But before I do that, I have to shift my RS line from register select to the data position, which is one. I still am in write mode. The only time I really need to read this display is if I want to set up to read the busy bit. And since that busy bit comes at about uh, something like 40, um, uh, 40 nanoseconds, I don't. It, it's not going to really really helpful, except in the the case where I do a clear command and then it's 1.6 microsecond or mill. No, sorry, it's like. Yeah, then it's 1.6 milliseconds, but even then I, I'm not fast enough to do anything in 1.6 milliseconds by hand, so there's really no point in uh, in this setup. I'm never going to really read the display, but you can read. You can even read what you wrote, but why do that? You should know what you wrote, so you don't really have to uh, go back and read it unless you somehow forgot. Okay, so now we're ready to write data. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick, I'm going to write the letter A. Turns out the letter A is a 4, 1 in hex. Okay, so 4, 1. So I'm going to make this a 4, and I'm going to make this a 1. And now we have our 8 bits of data here. We're in, we're in the register select position for data, and we still are in write mode, and I'm just going to toggle this, and I should write an A in there. Well, look at that. Now notice it also advanced the cursor one position to the right. 
Now you can change that by uh, writing another command to, to make it switch the other direction, or you can do a bunch of things. But I'm going to do that. Now, now maybe I'll change this and I'll make it a B. So, oh, sorry, I'll leave it 40, but instead of 41, we'll make it 42. And now we'll write a B. And now we'll make it 43. And we'll write a C. And then we'll make it 44, which should write a D. There we go. Now, I think what I'll do is just continue to write Ds. Now watch what happens. And I get all the way down here to the end. And then I have this one. Now the last one, I'll write an E just for grins. So that'll be here. We'll write an E. And now I'll change this so I'm writing an F. You don't see the F. Now the reason you don't see the F is because it was written in location hex 10. This is location hex 00. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, F. So 0, F. And now I just wrote to 1, 0. And that line is not the bottom line. The bottom line is starts at 4, 0. So, I ha so if you see me, I'm going to hit this button a whole bunch of times. And eventually you'll see the F kick in when I get to 40. There we go. Now the F, there's the F at 40. 41 is there. And if I keep writing here, I'll go, I'll go all the I'll fill this all up. And then if I keep going, I'll do 50, 60, and then I start overriding my initial data because now I'm back to zero. There, there is eight, there are 80 locations set up. Um, and uh, eight, I don't know what 80 in hex is, but it's it's uh, so yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we can do that in a minute. Okay, so that's how you write data. Now there, you can also write some characters and special characters, and it, and then you can even create your own characters and write those if you want. Um, like for instance, the sum sign is uh, F6. So let me put in an F6. Uh, looks like I've got the six there, right? Yeah. So there's the sum sign, and and there's a lot of characters in here, uh, including uh, some. I think it's katakana, or maybe it's hitagana. I don't even know, or maybe it's both. So you have the entire ASCII character set plus a bunch of other stuff. Um, and yeah, so I don't know, and and yeah, there's other stuff. Uh, and you can get a table of it in that Julian Eilert article. Uh, if we scroll on down, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, here. Here's the character set right here. So you can see the sum is right here. So that was uh, upper four bits, F, lower four bits, six. So that was F6. So that's, if I do, uh, if I want to do an omega, that would be F4. So let's do, we'll do F4. So there's F4. We'll do an omega. Anyway, so you can see you've got a, you've got a bunch of characters and things you can play with. And like I said, you can make up to, I believe, up to 16 of your own characters. No, maybe it's more than that. Maybe you can do 32 of your own characters. I forget. It does, it does say... Anyway, and there have been some students that have made up uh, characters. Now, let's say you don't. Let's say we don't like that. We want to erase the display. Fine, clear display. Zero. So you go back into a command mode. So I'm going to hit the RS line back to zero, and then I'm going to put in zero 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 one. Okay. Zero 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 zero, and then I'll make this one a one. And we'll do that. There we go. Put the cursor back to the home. Now, what if we wanted to put the cursor someplace else? Well, we can do that too. Set display address. All we have to do is put one, and then we get the address. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bits of address, which basically um, is uh, 100, uh, I guess that's 100 and... Uh, uh, seven bits of address. 
Yeah, so that's eight would be two fifty. No, uh, yeah, eight would be two fifty six. Seven is one twenty eight. So theoretically one hundred twenty eight. But I uh, that's uh, yeah, that's decimal. So I think it's the same as eighty hex. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think it is. Let me just double check that. Oh. Oh, okay. Somebody had a Zoom meeting. Oh man, good lord. Oh wow. Okay, I totally forgot that. Oh, so yeah, I knew that would happen. Ah, um, uh, okay. Uh, well, anyway, hang on. Okay, continuing here. So, uh, so what we're going to do then is we're going to um, we cleared the display with this command. Now let's say we want to move it. Uh, to a different address. Well, I happen to know that the top line is 0 through F and the bottom line is 40 through 4F hex, of course. So let me put it in the middle of the top line. So we'll put it in location uh, at location 8. Okay. So first we have to set this bit high and then we have to set uh, the rest of these bits or the address and we just want to go for the address 8 Okay, well, do you want to say, um, so my 6.30 Zoom meeting will go to 7.45, and then um, I promised my wife we'd get dinner then. So uh, how about about 8.30 p.m. tonight? Sorry, trying to set this, something up with one of the students. Okay, I meant to pause it, but I didn't. Uh, anyway, whatever. Okay, so here we go. So uh, we have, uh, we're setting the address. So we have one, because here we have to do display address, one and then our address. And since our address is 0, 8 hex, uh, that turns into 8, 8 hex, because we have to have the one bit set. So let's see if that puts the cursor right where we thought. Yep, there it is. Okay, so now what if we wanted to go to the bottom line? Well, now we just have to change the address, but it has to be it has to be an address of somewhere between 40 and 4F. Let's do 48. So we just set the 4 bit up. And we push this and we should drop down there. Ah, perfect. So you see you can move your cursor around without any trouble. And then now if we wanted to write here, we'll just uh, we'll just raise this. We'll we'll put in a we'll put in 48. I don't know, it's probably uh, an, a G or something. Let's see what it is. H. So uh, and we can write a bunch of H's there and so forth. All right. So that's a pretty good illustration of how it works. Now let me change it and show you what happens if we want to do four bit mode. All right, so for four bit mode. I'm just going to make I'm going to make sure all the lower four bits of my data address I'm going to turn them into high Z. I'm going to disconnect them, okay? Which means uh, they'll probably float high is what it means. But but it doesn't really matter because we're going to go into four bit mode. Now, how do we go into four bit mode? Well, so to get into four bit mode. We have to go back here to this line and we write in 0, 0, 1, 0. And then, uh, and then we just let the rest of the bits be zeros because we can't really set them anyway. So 0, 0, 1, 0. And so um, I don't want them to do high, so I'm going to put them into 0 to start with just so it doesn't screw anything up. Okay, so 0, 0. One zero, so that's two zero hex. Okay, 
And when we write this, that'll put us into 4-bit mode. Put it into command mode. And here we go. Now we're in now we're in 4-bit mode. Now uh, we also uh, turned off the display, I think. Let's see, uh, D. No, we didn't, but we'll do it here. So, so now, from here on out, everything has to be done in two nibbles. We have to send four bits and then four bits to make an eight-bit write. So we have to do we have to do it in two steps for everything. All right. So let's. So uh, we we took it out of when we did this because the function had four line. The down the downline function here is two line versus one line, and I put a zero there. So now we're actually in one line mode, which is why you saw it go back to here. And the data is still there, but we can't see it because uh, the, the contrast button's a little screwed up. But if I do that, now you can see it again. But I'm going to go back. We'll go back here. Well, I don't know. I think it actually it's fine like that. Okay. So now let's see if we can go back to two line mode. All right. So what's the two line command? Well, it would be zero zero one uh, zero to stay in four bit four bit mode because we don't want to go back to eight bit mode now that's going to screw everything up so we do zero zero one zero and then two line mode is one and then zero 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 so basically we need to put in two eight twenty eight hex okay so when I put in twenty eight hex Uh, yeah, 28 hex. Yes. That should be correct. Uh, having trouble seeing it, but yeah, okay. So here's 28 hex. 20, so 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the 8. Oops. Oh, sorry. I can't do that because I'm in 4-bit mode. So I'm going to put, and then so now I'm going to send it in 2 bytes. So the first, in 2 nibbles, the first nibble, the first 4 bits are going to be the high 4 bits. So I'm going to send 0, 0, 1, 0, which is 20 hex. So we'll send that. And then I'm going to send the 8. Now we're back to four line mode. OK, uh, to, to two line mode. But I'm still in four bit mode. Now let's let's put in some data. OK, so I'm going to. Let's put in some data. So I'm going to go back from uh, control. Well, first let's clear the display. So to clear the display, I'm just going to put in, I'm going to put in zero one hex. Okay. So I put in my first nibble is zero, and now I'm going to put in a one for the lower nibble, and I cleared it. So it works fine in four bit mode, but you just have to divide all your commands in, into into two nibbles. Now that is exactly what's going on when you're using the I squared C because the I squared C uh, doesn't have enough pins on that PCF chip. It only has eight pins. So it has to use three for the register select, the read write, and the E bit. And then it has it only has five left. So it uses four of those last five for the upper four data lines, which is how it's going to do four line mode. And then that final last eighth bit, it uses that to turn on and off the backlight of the display. But in this case, uh, the backlight, we don't have a switch on the backlight. Uh, it's just powered up with the same power that we used for the power of the display. Okay, so now here we are. So so we got that. Now let's put in, uh, we'll put us in data mode. Let's put in the A again. So we knew that A was four, that's the high bit, one. That's the low nibble. There's our A. And everything works exactly the same way, except we have to do it in two nibbles. The first nibble is always the upper four, and the last nibble is always the lower four, which sounds a little backwards, but that's how it is. And that's all there is to it. And we can keep doing this for as long as we want. Uh, we can but to send another A. We'll do another one. Four. One, and that's maybe we'll do uh, send something else. Four, we'll send a B. Two, and so forth. Everything takes two nibbles. Now, uh, 
fortunately, because the computer is really fast, uh, you don't really notice much, much, uh, much penalty, much delay penalty, uh, and uh, and so that that is actually good. So you can definitely interface this this LCD display. You don't really have to control the read write line unless you want to check the busy bit. And there's really that's the only point. So if you're not going to bother with that, uh, you don't have to do that. So then what your minimum configuration is you have to have control the register select line so you can send commands or data you have to be able to toggle the e-line and you have to control at least four data bits so you need six lines at a bare minimum if you're going to do it without the i2c buddy board attached to the back of your display on the other hand if you use the i2c buddy board thing uh, all you need are your i squared c lines and uh, you can still use your I squared C lines for other stuff. You don't, you're not restricted to just this, the, just this device if you're using I squared C. So that makes the that makes that very nice. Okay, so I think I think that's a that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today. Uh, I I may talk <clears throat> I may add a tomorrow morning I may do a short video and add that talking about projects. Um, but I do want everybody, um, so this is actually Monday, so Tuesday morning I'll probably put up another video and I'm going to ask, and I'm just going to give you some hints on projects. So if you watch that video, you should be able to pick, you know, one of the standard type projects I describe on there, like doing the cipher lock or doing, uh, displaying temperature on your two line by 16 LCD display or whatever, lots of different options. Okay, I think with that, I will quit.